The following Conscious Consumer Network recording of a live broadcast is available to purchase in high definition at ethymarket.com. Support free and independent media by becoming a CCN pledger. For 10 euros a month, you can have unlimited access to CCN high definition downloads at ethymarket.com. Ethymarket, the ethical marketplace for conscious consumers. Well, hello and welcome to Off Planet TV. Energy healer Chris Kaler is with me as well. We also have uh, Whisper, who is uh, a multidimensional alien of Duck T. He's with us in the room tonight, and we're going to talk about um, the adventures that he's experienced over the last three months. Some of you may remember we had done two previous shows with Chris and uh, Whisper, you want to go back and listen to the December 20th, 2014. That was a solstice show that we did. Um, you'll get to hear a little bit about that. And you can find all of that over on the website at offplanetradio.com. You are um, also able to pick up information and show information as well at offplanetmedia.net. And yes, I am still trying to use to video. Um, notice we got a little better lighting tonight. My nose isn't shiny anymore, and I don't look like a, a, a vaporous ghost. So we are definitely uh, on the way here. We're going to have, um, we're actually got some amazing guests coming up in the next month. The month of May is just loaded for bear. And uh, next week we are going to have um, Second Lieutenant, a um, Commander of the U.S. Army, PSYOPs, and intelligence, Scott Bennett's going to be here. And uh, we're going to talk about this. And basically, it has to do with how our own military and government are financing terrorism. And uh, they're doing that through Swiss bank accounts. And you're going to find out more about that from Scott Bennett. Um, <clears throat> got to talk for a few minutes about some, well, <laughs> unfortunate subjects. Um, first up, there's this. And uh, if you don't know what that is, that is the Roswell slide. Um, anybody hear about this, the Roswell slide thing? Um, apparently, what has happened is there were um, a trove of slides that were found down in Roswell, New Mexico, by some UFO researchers who then proceeded to put together an event to unveil the slide slides. Um, <clears throat> the unfortunate side effect of it is that this, we can't we zoom can't in on this real well, this is not an alien. This is actually a mummified skeleton of a male human being um, wearing the remains of a cotton shirt and um, on May 5th in Mexico, uh, a group of UFO researchers, and I use that term advisedly at this point, including Richard Dolan and um, uh, uh, several other, well, these guys. Let's pull this up here. I can't. Why can't I get a slide in there? Okay, that sucks. Anyway, 
Uh, Richard Dolan and uh, several other researchers went to Mexico. Dolan went on coast to coast to talk about the so-called Roswell slides. Uh, the outset to this is that, of course, this is not an alien. And um, you see this, you'll see a placard sitting there near the leg section of this poor, unfortunate creature. And that was a blurred image in the slide. It was decoded by the Roswell Slide Study Group, who had advised the organizers of this conference prior to the conference of what this actually said. They had actually used um, commercial off-the-shelf deblurring software to decrypt the placard, which clearly stated this was the mummified remains of a human being, a human being boy. So, um, well... Researchers got bit in the ass on this one. And here's the thing. And I've talked, uh, I've been on Facebook with Norio Hayakawa and Nick Redfern. And I think we all agree at this point that if you're going to do serious research into ufology, do the freaking research first, then have the dog and pony show. These guys put it backwards. And this is why I don't go to UFO conferences anymore. It's why I don't enjoy going out into the world of ufology because most of these people now are basically running a business. Yeah, I think so. You know, when you put events and book writing ahead of integrity in research in ufology, basically you have, uh, well, you've thrown the baby out with the bathwater and ufology has suffered enough. The other side of this is, the physical evidence for UFOs has always been kind of thin. In other words, crash retrieval units, um, and there have been materials found, and we're gonna talk to some researchers who have found materials and analyzed the materials, done the radio spectrography that's required to analyze the materials. Um, the problem is that we're dealing with a multi-dimensional phenomena. And researchers such as Rich Dolan, and uh, Carrie and Schmidt, who were um, on my show several years ago, um, well, Carrie and Schmidt wound up being the only interview in the history of my radio show where I never aired the podcast of their interview. They were rude and insulting, condescending, and frankly, as interview subjects, they talked over myself and my host, my guest host at the time, Chris Holly. And by the time we got off of the show that night, both of us concluded that we simply didn't want anything else to do with these guys. And so here again, uh, ufology is suffering right now because of greed and ego. And then there's another unfortunate event that occurred on Facebook this week. And I want to talk about this a little bit. It has to do with a family in Kentucky here in the United States um, named, named the Nogler family. This is a family that lives on the land. They presently are living in outside dwellings. They have 10 children and it is their choice in life to raise their children in what we would call a natural setting. Um, on Facebook, William Zabel, a researcher who um, was a Columbine researcher, issued this just horrific screed against these people, calling them free rangers and white trash, and ending his article by stating that he hoped that the Naglers would be hauled off by Homeland Security. What, what do you say? To somebody like that, what do you say about a family who was breaking? They weren't they weren't harming anyone. You know, I can't even begin to tell you how much this pisses me off. There's the um, the picture of the Nagler family who have now had their children taken from them for living off the grid. And uh, William Zabel, who issued this greed on Facebook, uh, basically stating that, uh, well, these people deserve to be hauled off to detention camps, as do other patriots. Uh, free rangers, that's a new term. I hadn't heard that before, free rangers. That's really interesting. But what Zabel was basically talking about here was anybody who was, um, let's say, outside of the box of the system 
As he writes here, he says, I am at a point where I hope the government rounds all these idiots up, including the militias, patriots, called patriots for profit, he says parenthetically, homeschoolers, free rangers, and other idiots like them and takes them to the FEMA camps. I will willingly drive the train that takes them there, and hopefully the government stops in Austin and gets Alex Jones before the idiot gets someone killed. Okay, so this is somebody who I guess has alternative media fatigue. Is, is that what this is? Is that, that what this is about, Mr. Zabel? But really, you'll drive the train? Were you a reincarnated uh, train engineer from Nazi Germany? Really? You're willing to drive the train to a detention camp to take people whose only crime is living a lifestyle that you don't agree with? This is the alternative media movement right now, folks, and we need to get serious about this. We need to start policing our own and cleaning them up. And Bill Zabel spent two days on Facebook defending his ass after I basically outlined my position on this, which is that people are entitled to live their lives the way they want to live them. And you have to decide what is the thing in your life that somebody else objects to and are you willing to stick to it? Are you willing to haul somebody off to a, to a detention camp, a FEMA camp, or if you're in Europe, some other form of camp, and repeat a Holocaust because of a difference in lifestyles? These are the kind of minds that we have been hearing now on alternative media for a long time. And to William Zabel, I have this to say. End of argument. So uh, what we have, uh, well, we have Chris Kaler in the room, I believe, and uh, we're going to launch into an evening of discussing healing and uh, alien abduction, not necessarily in that order. We have Whisper with us, and Whisper has a history as an alien abductee. Um, and so we want to welcome... On board tonight for Off Planet Radio, Chris Kaler, welcome. Hey, Randy, how you doing? It's been a long time. It has been a long time, my friend. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you. We've we've done this over radio for a long time, but now we have video. Yeah, I got my hair done especially for it. I'm looking really. Good. I saw that. It's especially shiny tonight too. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. So, Chris. Um, Let's start off by telling people a little bit about what you do for the uninitiated, because um, I sort of define you as a, a multidimensional healer in the sense that what you're dealing with in your healing modalities is far beyond the physical. You go into areas of healing that most people never enter into, as we will see when we begin talking to Whisper tonight, but uh, maybe give us Again, a recap of your story, your journey, and what you, what you're doing. Well, I, I am, a, a, as you said, multidimensional when it comes to healing. Uh, my my story started about nine years ago uh, when my first wife passed away, and before I was doing this work, I was in the printing trade, and uh, when she passed away, I was able to retire. So at 47 years old, here I am. I'm retired, and I got nothing to do, and the old saying goes one door closes another door opens and long story short I found myself uh, uh, around people who did this type of, of, of work healing modalities working with herbs and, and different ways of alternative ways of uh, working with health problems um, and I, I got onto it pretty quick it, it, uh, it came pretty naturally to me almost you could say gifted and I do like to use that word because this is is gifted um, the, the way that I work is, is I work psychically. So I am working with a pendulum and chart system that I've developed. And because I work outside of the box, because I work with, within parameters such as working with, with alien technology, alien spirits, alien implants, and, and that type of thing. And there's a lot of people out there who do work in that realm. Mm -hmm. um, but what I also do is I research everything also I, I research all about reptilians I, I look at David Icke David Wilcock there's a lot of different people who do a lot of research on this and um, 
I take that information and I use it within my work because ultimately when, when you're dealing with somebody with a health problem, someone especially with a health problem that seems to have no reason, something, some kind of health problem that no matter what they do, nothing gets better. And, and that has been my quest is, is to really find what is causing all of these health problems within humanity. Um, so so it, it does take you down a path that, that would make most people's, you know, uh, most people roll their eyes and say, okay, what has this guy been smoking? And, and how often does he smoke it? Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and how good is the stuff? Yeah. How good is this stuff? Well, it's pretty damn good. Um, so so, so it, it has taken me down the rabbit hole. And, and the, the more questions you ask, the, the uh, deeper the rabbit hole gets. And, and um, it, it does take you into areas where you really got to think about what is happening on this planet? What is happening with humanity? What is happening in this universe and solar system that, that is creating all of this turmoil? Uh, when, when it comes uh, down to, to the reptilian aspect of things, it, it goes in a few different directions. Um, there's a lot of work that I do removing spells and curses and, and, and black magic and voodoo uh, are extremely big, especially amongst families. Uh, and I find especially amongst uh, uh, Latino families, Italian families, uh, uh, Caribbean, there's, there's a lot of this going on. You don't want to piss off the wrong person because they're going to throw something at you and then you're stuck with it. And, and on a daily basis, I work with nine, 10 people a day, and you know, 80% of them are all dealing with curses and spells that have been put upon you that, that are a big contributor to your health problems. So it, it does get very, very deep within what I'm doing, and, and ultimately, there is results. There's, there's tons of results, um, and, and you, you can go check out my website and look at the testimonial page, and, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, chriskaler.net, correct? Correct. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your flow there, my friend. Flow is um, done. We're, we're getting a little laggy on the sound here. I think the video is about five minutes behind you, too, but that's okay. Yeah, Biggie, are we streaming live? Because I'm not seeing us on video right now. So just to let you know. Yeah, we are. So apparently the streaming from we're in, uh, by the way, this network airs from the Netherlands. So there's a fair amount of server latency on it. So I think that I think that's what's going on. But uh, Chris, as you entered into this area of healing, did your previous life prepare you for what you were going to encounter as a re result of healing? And I'm talking now about not just the curses, the Santeria, the um, hoodoo, voodoo, and woodoo, but um, what you ultimately encountered when you began to encounter people who had extraterrestrial contacts. How far did you have to stretch in order to get from uh, the Chris who was working in the printing business to a guy who routinely deals with people who are um, encountering off-world entities? Well... It, it, it was very easy for me to, to incorporate into it because ultimately I've got a very open mind and um, I, I'm able to accept, you know, whatever comes in and, and use the filters to filter out the garbage. And, you know, the people that I met who helped me along this way, uh, they, they taught me in, in a way that didn't scare me off. They were very matter of fact about it. They were, uh, very uh, um, knowledgeable about what they're talking about. And, and they, they showed me exactly how to do things, what to be aware of. So, so to me, it was a very easy transition. Uh, so nothing really prepared me. Just being open-minded to the whole fact was the big thing. And, and being able to think way outside the box, not just outside the box, but outside the universe, outside the time matrix, getting into the very deep core of what the universe really is and, and knowing what is out there that we can use ourselves as humanity to heal ourselves, to create the law of attraction, to, to bring things into our lives, to be used for us and against us, as in uh, witchcraft and voodoo and that type of thing. So it, it, was an, it was an easy 
transition. And as I said, you start venturing down that road, it's the old Alice in Wonderland scenario that that rabbit hole gets very deep, very fast, but it's yeah. a yeah, it wild does. ride. Yeah, it does. Um, early in your healing experiences, first off, do you just put like a shingle out and you go um, a multidimensional healer? How, 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 how do you do that? How did you uh, begin working with people? Did it just kind of flow to you? Uh, it, it was a slow start, just, just as most things are. Now, when you work in, in this kind of, of realm, this kind of, of modality of, of being an, an alternative healer or energy healer, uh, there's not a lot of people that, that are looking for the sign on your door. Uh, it's, it's mostly people who are already open-minded and know about this kind of thing who will seek you out. But what, what I did is I met the right people. Number one is my good friend Hayden. He's my he's my uh, guardian angel. Right on, he, Hayden. Uh, yeah. He introduced me to people like yourself and, and other radio shows on, on the internet, which are so incredible. Let me tell you that the information that is on the internet on these radio shows is is I'm going to say bullshit free. Uh, there's a lot of uh, validity and truth into it. You look at you know all these other radio shows, coast to coast, can be a little bit out there uh, as yeah. far as. What is really going on? But the the internet radio shows. I think you guys do a great job in screening who you're bringing on, making sure that that there's validity to what they're talking about. So we we did that, and and it's a matter of education. It, it's a, it's a big matter of of exp being able to explain to people how it works, why it works, and, and what is causing your health pro problem. So people who are open minded, they come to you. Okay, you put yourself out there and you wait for them to come to you. You can't go out and sell this type of thing because ultimately, uh, how, how do you sell uh, uh, you know, removing reptilians and removing spells and curses and, and that type of thing? It's, it's just not done. Did you hear that sound in the background? Is, is Whisper still with, with us there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I heard this and I'm like, Oh no, live one. Live, we're going to do the first live. I'm, and I'm not making fun here, but we have to have, you know, we do have some humor about this. So, yeah, exactly. Um, so currently, uh, you are you deal obviously with the strange, but let's face it, most people on a day-to-day -day basis are dealing with mundane things, most of which is a result now of the energetics that are being pumped out into the planet in terms of these Wi-Fi signals, EMF, the um, uh, atmospheric energies that are streaming in, and then, of course, bad diet, bad air, and bad water. So what are you seeing in terms of trends right now, Chris, that uh, present challenging problems in the physical? There's a few basic things that I, that I generally work with, and the, the things that come up most. Uh, now, you talk a lot of people are, are very big into uh, you know keeping EMS off of them and, and the ELFs, all the Wi-Fi stuff. I got a, a, a Wi-Fi router sitting right in front of me. It doesn't bother me. No, nothing, nothing like that really affects me. If you're a person who who these energies bothers and affects that means you're not grounded properly because uh, ultimately these energies come in and they should be able to leave your body just like a well-grounded house okay mm -hmm. so if you're not grounded properly then these things are going to build up as a static charge with, within your body um there's uh, something that's not really well known and that's the outlets in your house the, the plug outlets and, and the light switches just because nothing's plugged into them doesn't mean electricity is coming out. Electricity is still coming out. You can't feel it or see it, but it's coming out as electromagnetism. Mm -hmm. So if you tie a little magnet, opened up that plastic switch plate and put a magnet in there, that would stop the electricity from coming out. You can actually feel a pulsing on the wall where, where that switch plate is. And that will stop the electricity from coming out and building up a static charge in your body. So... You know, there's a lot of other things involved other than just the the, uh, the big three um, that, that people um, are, are trying to get rid of. There's there's, there's ways around that to, to help your body discharge it. Grounding is one of them. Mm. Walking barefoot. You can shungite to absorb the EMS and ELFs. 
I mean, that, that is one of them. But I, I really don't find that as a big problem within most people. Um, what I find a lot of is scar tissue. Now, we all got aches and pains and, and different things happening. Now, be, because of all of the um, reptilian activity, because of a lot of the, the curses and spells, it creates scar tissue in our body, and it goes to the to the level of scar tissue with inside the cardiovascular system that will block blood flow. Uh, scar tissue can get inside of your skin, bind it to the bone, and cause problems. A lot of that that I see with the scar tissue, so removing all of the contributors that cause the scar tissue is a big deal. Then also finding the scar tissue. Parasites is another big one. If there's any doctors out there listening right now, shame on you. Shame on you, shame on you. Because ultimately, about 50% of all major health problems are being caught by parasites. Worm parasites, there's, there's a little nasty one called Leishmania americana, which is a single cell microscopic parasite that a lot of doctors I'm seeing, or not a lot, but I've seen some cases where people are in a hospital dying of cancer and they're dying of a parasite. Mm. So, so that that is another big one. The parasitic problem is a huge problem. And a parasite can be seen in a live blood analysis, which I do in my clinic. Um, if, if you're ever suffering from a health problem and you don't know what it is, do a parasite cleanse. Get yourself some black walnut. Uh, Dr. Christopher's Parasite Syrup is an excellent one. It contains a bunch of different herbs. Diatomaceous earth works well. And do a parasite cleanse and see if things get better. If they do, then you know that there's a parasite problem. And if there's parasites in your body, that's going to create scar tissue because it's going to do damage. So there's, there's like a three different level action you need to take when, when you're dealing with a parasite. Uh, curses and spells, those can create scar tissue. They can also be manifested uh, from a curse or a spell. So uh, there's a lot of, like I said, the rabbit hole gets pretty deep and you need to really cut down to the very root as to what is causing the health problem. Are we still on? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, okay. Anyway, what I was trying to tell you, Chris, was lean into your mic, and here I was. I had mine muted, so there you go. Live TV, it's great. Isn't this wonderful? I can't hide anymore. There's nowhere to hide. See? Microphone muted. Not good. Anyway, um, I want to go back a minute, because the parasites thing is often overlooked. Scar tissue. Um, are we talking about external or internal or both types of scars in terms of, um, well, let's just take an example. Um, somebody who has surgery. I had surgery a couple of years ago and I have a, a site here. I have an external scar. I also have internal scar tissue, tissue because of the bursa in my elbow, which was operated on. What is impeding healing in terms of scar tissue and how does one deal with that well what happens with scar tissue is of course you have surgery and your body's natural way of healing is to create scar tissue and it binds everything together um so what can happen is if there's too much scar tissue it'll bind the the, the elbow bone to, to the muscle and then when you move your elbow it's going to pull and cause some pain so when there's too much scar tissue there generally caused by by, a, by parasitic activity. Uh, your surgery scars are a little different. They're only going to be a, a certain size. But the parasitic scars, because parasites can be in a very large area, are going to create a lot of scar tissue. That's, that's the ones to watch for. Um, so everything kind of starts to bind to, together and stick together. Uh, and, and that's when you move and it hurts. That's, that's when you try to bend your knees and, and it hurts every time you bend your knees. might not just be an arthritis problem, but uh, scar tissue binding the muscles, the tendons, the, the connective tissue in your skin together. That, that's where a lot of the pain comes in. in. In surgery, this is a thought I had after I had my surgery done. And for months, my energetic body felt very off. It, is there something in the act of a, of a, a knife going into a person, either 
well, let's just say it's uh, any any type of puncture. But that particular wound, because surgery is a wound, to me felt like I I was violated my energetic body. Is this a violence to the body? And if so, how how do you deal with that? Of course, it is violation. And uh, anytime you're you, you, you go under into surgery, especially if you're going under general anesthetic, your, your body, your energetic body is left open. And in a hospital, a hospital is the worst place to be when you're sick. Think of how many people have died in that hospital and how many spirits are wandering around, how many yes. other types of spirits are wandering around. So, of course, now you're on this operating table and they're cutting you open. Now Mr. Spirit says, oh, let's dive in and have some fun. OK, let's corrupt somebody's life. And, and that's what happens is, is we do get jumped. We, we do get hijacked and at uh, different levels, of course, and, and different people, as Whisper will attest later on. We, we all get uh, a, a, a multidimensional spirit coming into us and, and having their way with us, if you will. So, so when you feel energetically raped, if you feel energetically violated, th there is definitely something going on at that level. That could be many, many different things. Well, as you just pointed out, uh, even the act of anesthesia, you're going into an altered state, you're going into a, a delta consciousness and a place where you no longer have control over your consciousness. Uh, and truthfully, it took me months. And I, as you know, I meditate. I, have, I do remote viewing. I have some spiritual practices. And it took me months to kind of clear some of this stuff out. And the picture that I got when I was meditating on this was that there was a there was a, a hole in my energetic body. That it took months for me to lose that feeling. Any yeah. thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah. Well, you got to consider they took a knife and they cut you, so they did cut a hole into your skin. They also did cut a hole into your aura. So. Not only does, does your skin have to heal, but your aura has to heal as well. And, you know, just some simple Reiki or, or quantum touch or, or any kind of, of energy work, anybody who knows what they're doing could, have, you know, easily uh, smooth that over and, and, uh, yeah. and done some, some work with it and healed it. Yeah, well, f I am trained in quantum touch, so I did use that. I routinely use quantum touch on myself. I don't practice it on anybody else because I never took the – anything past the basic course, but um, those are modalities that uh, Reiki, obviously, is, you, you practice Reiki, That's is that correct? You no, use that? I, I've actually got uh, a certification in quantum touch. I okay. Took, yeah, I took quantum touch so I can understand this whole energy thing that's going on that I was doing. Okay. I wasn't sure if you were doing Reiki as well. Some, some pra I, I, when I took the quantum touch course, I, I, there were Reiki practitioners there. And there's subtle, obviously subtle differences between all of this. Yeah, quantum touch is a sister to Reiki. Yeah, very much so. Um, with a little less, it's something I think almost anybody can learn to do very quickly. I took it over a weekend and frankly saw some amazing results from it. Um, moving on to the physical and things that you're seeing right now, um, toxins. And water; those are two areas that I don't. I don't know if I've ever touched on on this with you before. Um, dealing with, let's go with water first, because I'm very interested right now in work that's being done in structured water and uh, using intention, kind of like the Dr. Omoto work. Are you working with any of that as well? I, I do some stuff with that. You know, um, I, I look at. At water as, as you know it's part of us we, we are 80% water the earth is 80% water we, we have to be hydrated now what I do find a lot is, is that um, there's a lot of shamanic spells on our water yeah and and when because we have to drink there's just no way around it we have to drink so you you would ingest the water and you may get a shamanic spell within you uh, one level way shape or form um, and structuring the water helps to release a lot of those those uh those, those spells. Um, what, what I like to drink is, is shungite water. Um, and then with shungite water, it'll hold an intent very, very well. It, it, you just take a glass of shungite and you put your hands on it and you can quantum touch an intent into it. 
and then you can uh, intend for all the toxins to be released, all of the the, the fluorides, all, all of the hormones or any of the, the uh, pharmaceutical drugs that were poured down in somebody's toilet getting into the water system. You can remove all of that just by making the intent to do that. That's what I like about shungite water. Um, Explain what that is, please, Chris. Shungite? For, yeah. Shungite is, is a mineral that, that's harvested in Russia. Okay, there's one specific area in, in Russia. It's, um, it's, it's very much like a carbon. So it does absorb things. So if you, you have this in your water, it's going to absorb any kind of toxin into the stone. So you're going to get nice pure water. We did a test with shungite water and I brought it to a water guy who does water treatment. And he took the shungite and he put it in some cups. He put it in a plastic cup measured the total dissolved solids, and they went off the roof because the shungite was pulling all the toxins out of the plastic. Yeah. So, so the, the shungite will remove toxins, impurities. It will also add a lot of the minerals that your body needs for nutrition, and it also has consciousness, so you, you can use it as a healing uh, modality on its own for the most part by adding intent to the water with a uh, – a crystal wand or just your hands and, and you can use it uh, for whatever you need. Now, where would one get the Shungite water? There's lots of places that sell it. I do have it on my website. It's not very expensive at all. Uh, 25 bucks will get you 200 grams and that'll treat a, a, a couple liters of water. Uh, you, all you got to do is Google it. You can find it anywhere. Lots of places have it. Okay. And, and again, you know, folks, go over to chriskaler.net and avail yourself of the things that are on that site, resources, free resources, um, and some of the things that obviously Chris is offering as well. Uh, the other subject I wanted to touch on, what was it? Gosh, I just had brain fog. Uh, we were talking about water and um, do you remember what I was going to ask you? <laughs> Oh, I can't remember. Work with um, me. Work with me here. I need a. It was water and beer. No. Um, beer would be great. You know, that's healing. We know you like beer, by the way, too. We know. Oh, that. Rod, Rod, beer fart here. Okay. Um, I, I can't remember what it was. You got I me can't either. On a <clears throat> I got. I heard well, he got me thirsty, so I needed to grab some water there um, and non shungite at the moment, but I'm going to work on that as well. So what are some of the trends that you're current, currently seeing, Chris, things that maybe are new, different, or uh, emerging trends in any of the areas we're talking about? No, we need a five-hour show for that. Um, I know. but Here's a couple of the big ones. Here's a couple of the real big ones. I do work a lot within the soul. Okay, and, and I look at the soul as something maybe a little different than what we all kind of perceive the soul as, maybe our personalities and, and how good is your soul kind of thing. Um, a lot of people with depression have got a soul issue where their soul gets disconnected. Okay, a lot of people with addictions are going to have a problem where their soul is disconnected from their body. Okay, now let's let's put this into perspective. Now, the, the, the soul is located within the hippocampus in your brain, and then there is something called the well of souls, which is in the parietal occipital. <laughs> and, so now let's, let's take, for instance, you're a professional hockey player, and you take a real heavy body check, and you, your head goes into the boards, and you get a very bad concussion. So now because that soul and the well of souls is in your brain, it, now, it can become uh, disconnected, almost like a safety feature, let's say. Um, so now, all of a sudden, when that soul gets disconnected, now you, now you uh, go into a depression to a point where you might even want to commit suicide. And there has been the, those uh, types of hockey players. Some, some guys have, have uh, taken very bad hits, lots of concussions. They get depression. They take their own life. So uh, with the work that I do, it is quite easy to reconnect the soul as long as you know how to do it. It's not really that difficult. It can be done. And all of a sudden, when I do that with people who are going through depression, all of a sudden, oh, they feel joy right away. They feel they feel themselves start to lift up. They feel a lot better about themselves. So, so that has been very big. Working in the soul is, is huge. Now, 
if you look at somebody with addiction, and let's look at, at, at kids with, or even adults for that matter, with video game addiction. We'll use that as an example. So there's a lot of video games that contain uh, programs that are, are programmed to, to take your soul. Okay, so that can come through the, the video, through the screen, and it'll actually take soul or, or fragments of your soul. So now your body is smart. It wants to be connected to your soul. So you're going to be attracted to that game all the time to be with your soul. So now it, it's, it becomes an addiction. It's not an addiction to the video game. It's an addiction to be connected to your soul. So that has been also very huge working with, with, with that concept. Um, another concept I'm working on is I, I've got a few clients um, who, as soon as they try to do something good for their health, their, their health gets worse. They get sabotaged. Yeah. So if somebody tries to quit smoking, their health is really, really good, and they're, but they're smokers, so they stop smoking. All of a sudden, they get diabetes. All of a sudden, they, they get migraines or whatever, there is an entity, and generally it's a reptilian that is within their body that likes it when they smoke, stop smoking, they get pissed off, and, and they rock the boat to try and get you to start smoking again. So, so that, that has been huge um, with, with that type of thing. And, and uh, it's, it's all of the sin stuff, so, so drinking, uh, pornography, smoking, uh, doing, doing street drugs. If you stop doing that, all of a sudden you get really sick, you go through detox, that is the reptilian within you going through the detox and he don't like it. Okay. <laughs> Under severe circumstances, it can even lead to gang stalking. They own all that, all the etherics and their uh, overlays and implants can even lead to gang stalking and the whole voice to skull thing just for quitting uh, a vice. Just for quitting a vice. Yeah. That was Whisper. He's got a lot of good information about this. We'll get into that later. Um, what else have I been working? Hey, he's still on. Yeah, hi, Randy. Um, here's another big thing, and and this is another example of, of thinking way outside the box. Not just outside the box, but th th this 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 is a, a huge thing that I, I was brought brought to me by my guides that I work with. And I work with my future self. And my future self, I have sent my future yeah. self to the star of Atlantis, where uh, before the fall of Atlantis, where there's clarity and there's full knowledge. Now, what I have found, we all have these bodies, all these different energy bodies. And I uh, was brought to me to work with them. Future self, parallel selves, mirror selves, uh, uh, higher selves, all these different selves, if you will. So, if you're a person and you've got, let's say, rheumatoid arthritis, your body is stiffening up, your muscles are really stiff and spasming, it's very difficult to move, and you're developing a lot of scar tissue in your body and, and that type of thing, there is an extremely good chance that one of your cells has passed away. And your body, in, in this time, is going through symptoms of rigor mortis. Okay? So quantum entanglement and any any scientist will, will verify this if you have your energy here in, in, in let's say the end of the universe and your energy is here on planet earth whatever happens on that energy on on the edge of the universe you're going to feel a ripple effect on the planet earth so so that has been huge and i've been working with that and actually getting really good results uh, on people who have severely stiff muscles rheumatoid arthritis and, and that type of thing. So that that's, has been a, a very huge finding, and, and it is working, to say the least. Now, let me, let me understand this concept. You're working with a future aspect of the patient or yourself, so to speak. In other words, is this like – we've and I've done shows with this before, about this before, too, with a – uh, another talk show host down in Mexico. And it's, it's such an incredibly trippy concept when you think about the fact that you exist in multiple dimensions, multiple timelines at the same time. But then accessing that, what is the correspondence between the future self and the present being that we see? In other words, the me that's here now talking to you but another future 
version of myself? What is the correspondence and how do you tap into that? The, the correspondence is the vibration or, or the energy signature. Chris Kaler right here is the same energy vibration as Chris Kaler in the future, wherever that may be, whatever dimension, universe, whatever that may be. It's the same vibration. So quantum entanglement, let, let's, let's try to explain it a little differently. So let's say you're a client of mine and you send me a, a hair sample for me to work with, okay? So you send me a hair sample, that's your DNA, that's it's a lot of your information within your body. Mm -hmm. So if I was to do an energy healing on the hair, wherever that person is in the world, they would get the healing because it's, it's their vibration, it's their DNA, it's their encoding. Okay, so is this genetic? Is there a genetic map to this as well? No, it's, it's not so much genetic. Uh, it, it's more. Uh, it's more just just. Uh, it's, it, it is atomic, and it, it's all it's, it's all vibration. Everything is energy and vibration. So if you have one vibration here, one vibration at the edge of the universe, it's the same vibration. So what you what you do on one affects the other. Okay, at certain levels. So let's say on, on planet Yahoo, my future self dies, I, I get really stiff. Okay, if, if, if me on planet Yahoo gets a really bad pneumonia, I get a cold on, on planet Earth. So, so it's, it's a ripple effect at certain levels that, that makes a, a, the big effect. Okay, that's what I meant by an echo. That's basically my visualization of it as well. So tapping into that, what happens? Is information being imparted? Um, are you able to heal the present from the future? And, and does it ripple back into the past as well? It, from it certainly does. Like what, what I'll do is, is uh, in the case where somebody somebody's future self has died, I will just disconnect the, the virtual body here on Earth from that future bo future self that mm. doesn't have any effect anymore. Okay, that that might as well just do that because that future self is dead. Okay, uh, if I do need to heal the future self, yes, we can do that because we're working with quantum energy, which is the entire universe is, is at your beck and call, and you can basically go ahead and do whatever needs to be done. So your intent is to work on that future self. The future self will, will be sitting there doing whatever it does, and all of a sudden will be looking around and saying, hey, something's happening. I feel a tingle. All of a sudden, this is, oh, I feel better. My pain in my knee is gone. Wonderful. It just happened on its own. That that could be the result of me working on the future self right here on, the, on planet Earth. Now, this goes into, obviously, timelines and some of the strangeness of quantum entanglement as well. Um, in dealing with this, how do, how do we know that, how do we know that we're dealing with a true, well, I guess you just answered my question, basically. You're dealing with, you, you use the example of a hair sample, and that's something I can really access. So the correspondence is there. Is there any possibility of deception in all of this? In other words, do we have beings that are tampering with our timelines or even, in fact, our future, past, or present selves from the standpoint of attempting to manipulate things? Uh, of course there is, and there always is. Um, the reptilians are the big ones, of course, and we, we talked about that, that in, in great extent in other shows. Uh, there's other versions of the reptilians. There's the Sith, which are uh, an ancient being that, that love to cause uh, trouble within us. And, and uh, they can definitely uh, interfere. They, they can definitely get involved. And, and you know, a, a very big amount of health problems is caused by these beings uh, uh, involving themselves w within us, our DNA, our physicality, our consciousness, causing a lot of things. I mean, if you, if you look across the street and you see somebody walking and talking to themselves and yelling and throw their hands in the air, they're, they're not just imagining this. They're actually going through a dimensional trauma. There, mm -hmm. There's things going on that, that is really there that is bothering them. Uh, there, there's a, a, a mental health hospital in Winnipeg, in, in the city of Selkirk. And back in the 50s, 
they would bring in uh, uh, mediums to talk with these people and they would remove the spirits that are inside these people. And all of a sudden they found that there's nobody left in the hospital. So they stopped the program because they're, they're healing all these people by removing the spirits that are in there. So people who are talking to themselves, people who, who uh, are throwing their arms in the air and are, are, don't seem functional or seem like really out there. Yeah, they're really out there in another dimension battling with these demons. That they're things that are really going on. You know, the creepiest places I've ever been in are places, well, the creepiest place I've ever been in was actually uh, a, a still operating at the time mental hospital back in the 70s when I used to visit a friend of mine who uh, ingested very large doses of hallucinogens and wound up uh, just becoming unhinged. Unfortunately, that, that friend of mine spent the rest of his life in, in a mental hospital. But when I was there, I remember how, first off, this horrific sense of grief and this heaviness and this sense of everything around me was just gruesomely oppressive. And I now have been going back and just walked the grounds of that hospital at one point and that stuff's still there. They've never healed that land. Is and, and maybe I'm taking you into like an area where, you know, this is kind of off the beaten path, but my, my point is that we seem to have these wells in different parts of the planet, some of them natural, some of them ancient, and some of them are just the result of what we've done with human beings in terms of putting them into institutions such as jails and mental institutions do you ever approach any of this do you ever deal with this in terms of actually dealing with healing the land itself or the geophysical location yeah quite often what what i'll need to do is is to go into the person's house and and find any Good. portal stargates and and uh and, and negative com connections to, to lower dimensions, that happens quite often. If you walk into somebody's house and all of a sudden you feel like something's pushing down on you, you feel low, that's you going into a lower dimension, okay? And, and I think the word dimension um, can really be construed in a lot of different ways. We, we think of, you know, dimensions as up, down, left, right, you know, third dimension kind of view on things. But a dimension can also be just a, a layer of energy, lower, higher, uh, that type of thing. So I will go into people's houses and clear out the house, and, and that makes a huge difference because sometimes the entity is not within the person but within the house doing like a haunting. Yeah. Yes. Okay. yes. I've done that many, many times, and, and when I go into a house and there's something there, you feel a tingle go through your body. You feel the hairs on the back of your neck. Not that I've got hair on the back of my neck, but you, you feel that going on, and, and you know that there's something there. And there is spirits all around us. I'm a, how many spirits are in this room right now, Whispers? Probably about 50 to 20. 20, 30, 40, 41, 2, 3, 4, 5, 40, 45. 45 different spirits in this room right now in my office. And they just love this place because the energy is so nice and high. So, so yes, I will do that. Now, um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story. Um, friends of ours own um, a condominium and a piece of land in uh, uh, Puerto Morales, Mexico. And they've been trying to sell this place for quite a while. They've got signs up, and it's a very big place. It's developing quite nice. It's right in between Playa del Carmen and Cancun. And there's no reason why this land should not sell. So, so um, they called me up and said, okay, Chris, you, we, you saw what they did with our campgrounds. I cleared their campground, and all of a sudden it was full. They invited us out for a week. They, they paid for us to go out there. And I spent one hour clearing out witchcraft spells from the land and from the condo and uh, now the story is is that there's somebody who lives on that block where they own the property and this this woman caught his her, her husband cheating on her so she came right out and said i'm putting a spell on all this area nobody's going to enjoy it anymore so i went out took my tools and started clearing witchcraft spells off of the land people are walking by saying what are you doing because i'm holding this big pyramid and i'm I'm leaning over. What are you doing? I said, well, I'm clearing the witchcraft spell off of this land. And they said, oh, it's about time somebody came and did that. 
Okay, so so it was well known that this energy was there. So we get home three days later, we get an email saying that there's somebody sitting at their door, money in hand, wanting to buy both the, the building and the land. So the, the energy, negative energy within the land and a building can definitely have a big effect on, on the human living within it. Um, do you, can you kind of maybe walk us through here a little bit of either use of a pendulum or a little bit of dowsing? Uh, is that something that you, you can oh, show us? Absolutely. Um, what I'll get Whisper to do is to hold... take, take it. Yeah. We take the opportunity here since, I mean, we have video now and, um, really, you know, this is an opportunity to, for the viewers to we're doing there's a five minute delay in the in the video but we will do this the best we can yeah so, don't look at the video um on the on the on the on the web browser that will okay. that will distract that's like so so let's ask about, uh, let's let's work on randy for a second shall we are you game for that randy i'm absolutely game for that okay so we're gonna ask with the pendulum where do we need to work first within Randy? Just anything in general. Where do we need to work first? Now, when you see me use my pendulum, I am not your typical pendulum user. I do it a completely different way, and it gets me there a lot faster because when I work on people, 10 people a day, I got to get things done quick. Okay, we're going to start by working within your primitive self. Okay. Okay. What do we need to do within Randy's primitive self? So we're not looking for a specific health problem. We're just going to do a general clearing, and that's the intent that's put into this right now. What do we need to do for Randy's primitive self? So you have got a shamanic veil within your primitive self. So, and what we need to do to go further is lift that veil so we can actually see the problem. So, you can just hold that right there, Whisper. So, I'm going to take this wonderful tool. I'm going to hold it up to the camera, and I'm going to say the words to remove the veil, and it's going to be removed from your primitive self. Here we go. So, remove and lift all shamanic veils within Randy's primitive self. And, Randy, you tell me when it tangles. So we just Ooh, lifted. There it was. There it was. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. So we just lifted that veil. Yeah. I felt it. Yeah. So so what yeah. we do is is we just keep on doing the same thing over and over again, doing clearings, and and then what it does is it eventually gets us to the root problem. Let's say you come to me and say I've got a digestive issue. By doing these clearings and, and possibly some connections, we will get to the point where we get to find a parasite or, or a mineral uh, excess, a heavy metal, or, or scar tissue or something like that, that that we start to move out. And then and almost immediately, if we hit the nail right on the head, your health problem is basically gone. It, it, you feel res results right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, that was actually quite phenomenal. Uh feeling that very nice very and nice we do that for people every day 10 people a day and it works so what i've done here i don't have an i don't really have a way to post i, I would like to take a couple of minutes here and maybe open it up to take a, a phone call or two and then i want to bring whisper in so give everything uh, some time uh, to you know, because clearly uh, this evening is about. And pardon me if I'm glancing around here. I've got three monitors going, and I'm trying to navigate two computers and three monitors here. But um, on my website, which is offplanetmedia.net, in the chat box right now, I posted the phone numbers. Um, there's two phone numbers you can use. One is uh, a toll-free number. It is US, so it's plus one. Area code 415-762-9988. That's 415-762-9988.
And then one six four six five six eight seven seven eight eight. That's a U.S. toll number. That's six four six five six eight seven seven eight eight. Those are the numbers you can call in. And if you go in the chat box, the meeting ID and phone numbers are there. That's it, offplanetmedia.net. And we'll open it up. We're just going to take maybe one or two quick calls, and we're going to work through you a little bit. Because the idea of this is to give the listening audience a chance to see Chris's work and uh, the people who have shown up to listen tonight an opportunity to experience uh, a little bit of, of, of what I just did. Because I got to tell you, when I felt it, it was exactly that. It was a tingle. It was a, there was a lifting. It's something energetically shifted at that point. And Chris, you and I've never worked with you. I've not, I, and, I, and I say this ashamedly that I have not done a session with you and I need to do that. But um, I have to say, after experiencing that, um, we, will, we will definitely be talking. That was awesome. That was awesome. Glad I feel lighter. Like I feel much lighter right now. In that, fact, that generally, what most people say is when we do these clearings, they feel lighter. And this yeah. is all the heavy energy is being taken off of you. I had, a, I had an ache in my shoulder, and I noticed that that muscle group right in there started to let go. So it was pretty awesome. Um, anything else in terms of things you're working with right now, new tools or things that um, <clears throat> are on the horizon for you? Because you're constantly picking up new things. I, I know you talked about the pyramid a little bit. You're working with um, pendulums and... Let's talk about this pyramid. This is the this is a, called a vesica Pisces, and within it, it's two pyramids, butt to butt, with wires going around it. And it's this is a form of sacred geometry. Uh, if you just googled vesica Pisces, you'd see a lot of pictures of it. And this pyramid is unique. What what it it facilitates? Oh, hold on one second. I'll, I want to get something. Yeah, and caller, just stay there. We're, we're going to bring you up in a second. Oh, okay. so look at this one. This this is the old pyramid I was working with. This is the Silver Lake Pyramid, and this is the Vesica Pisces. So this one now sits in my little museum, and the reason for that is because this pyramid is brought in uh, because it facilitates the new energies within the planet, which are feminine energies. So Vesica Pisces is a feminine energy energy tool. Now the uniqueness about it is that the, the slope of the pyramid is a 1.72 degree slope. Now, if you look at the pyramids of Egypt, are a 1.61 mm. degree slope. The 1.61 actually holds us into the third dimension realm. So by using a tool like this with a different pitch, it actually opens a door to the fourth dimensions and fifth dimensions. And that's where we want to be. It's where we want to do healing. So this is, is a lot more powerful, uh, even, even though this one looks more powerful. This is a more powerful tool, and it, it's got a lot more punch uh, per size and, and for the weight of it. So, so that has been very, very big. Um, and and as, as far as, as tools go, that, that has been basically it, what I've been working with. This is all you need when, when you're doing this work. That, coupled with, with the dowsing and using your intent with it, it can create a very, very powerful device. So that has, has been the, the newest basic thing working with. Uh, I am doing a lot of research right now and working with some different amino acids and, and uh, <clears throat> in our body, such as uh, CPH4. If anybody has seen the movie Lucy, where this person ends up using 100% of their brain because the CPH4 that was leaked out of the drug she was carrying in her stomach I'm working with that to try to, to develop up our brain power a bit more. There's a few other uh, things like forsythia, which is a herb that helps to all your cells to connect and, and to uh, uh, talk to each other. Uh, so I've been working with forsythia on an energetic level, CPH4 on an energetic level. And there's a few new amino acids and, and different energies that I'm bringing into the mix to try and, and uh, send them to people to help healing. Uh, what I I give you a quick example. Uh, I have a, had a client who uh, had a, a bit of a, a tear within the iliopsoas tendon in the front of her of her pelvis. 
So in order to, to repair it, I sent stem cells energetically, and within two days, she was walking and, and feeling fine. So we're doing a lot of, uh, of, of trials with those types of things that were making some differences. They are working. But but this pyramid itself is, is the do-all, the end-all, let me tell you. See, I'm mute again. Uh, let me carry on. So <laughs> um, I've also been doing some, some research in, into the whole thing with Morgellons. I, I've had some uh, clients uh, come in with that and working within those realms. So, so Morgellons, uh, touching on that a little bit. I know a lot of people call me and they say they've got Morgellons, but is it really Morgellons? That, that's what you really have to be able to discern um, if, if that's what it is. So uh, being able to, to know exactly what it is, that's the big thing. Cancer, is it really cancer? Okay, yeah. and, and that's what this dowsing system I have does, is it takes all the guesswork out of things. Instead of saying, well, let's treat it as cancer. If it's not cancer, we'll treat it as something else. We know exactly what, what to use and, and what is the problem. I apologize. My mic uh, was popped out on me there. Uh, we oh, do have okay. a caller. We have a caller on the line. And just go ahead and give us a name we can work with. Welcome to Off Planet TV. And uh, you are on the, you're on the air with Chris Kaler. Yes. Hi. Hi, Randy. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is uh, Montana, and Chris, thank you for um, taking my call. You're so welcome. What can I do for you? Well, um, I don't know. I, I've been listening to the live here, but it looks like it doesn't match what I'm hearing here, so I think I'm behind or something. I don't know. Yeah, you've got delay on that, So don't. You, and if you've got it on, turn it off. Turn the sound down right now. Yeah, okay. there you go. All right. All right. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead, Montana. All righty. Well, um, I have well, I have a couple things. One, I, I really struggle with um, anxiety. That's a real problem for me. And then I have a lot of um, female problems like endometriosis, uh, fibroids, um, um, interstitial cystitis, a lot of abdominal female problems. Not a problem. Not a problem. Okay, so we're going to start asking some questions. What question is optimal for Montana, please? So when you're dowsing, you ask the right question, you get the right answer. We're playing a game here. If you find the right way to do it, they will give you the prize. That is basically what's happening. Otherwise, I'll just use my pen. You'll tell me the answer right away. But you got to go through the checks and balances. Okay, what area in Montana's body is in crisis. And of course, that is going to tell me the reproductive system. So right now, do you have any kind of pains or cramping or any kind of symptoms? Um, I do. I also have like pudendal neuropathy, which I didn't know if you knew what that was, so I didn't bother to name it, but that's at the base of my spine and that is um, hurting right now. Um, but, you know, the other stuff in the front area isn't hurting right now. Okay. It's let, an ongoing let, issue. What I want to do is, is let's work on, on uh, the base of the spine to see if we can make a change right away in, in the way that feels, okay? All righty. Okay, where do we need to work within Montana? Base of the spine, pain in the base of the spine. Where do we need to work? So this is showing me to work in the nervous system. Okay, now I need to find those charts. My charts blew up today. Where do we need to work within Montana's nervous system? Okay, we're going to look at the spinal cord. Lower part of the spinal cord. Now we're going to ask, what is causing crisis within the spinal cord? Just bear with me one minute while we find this. Okay. We need to find the right answer. Close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. <laughs> and we have neither in this office. 
No horseshoes, no hand grenades. All right, just empty sushi boxes. All right, okay. What is causing crisis within the spinal cord? Montana's spinal cord. Okay, this is a, a very common problem that I find, and it is called copper toxicity. So there's an abundance of copper in your body. Copper is conductive of electricity. The nervous system is all about electricity. If there's short circuiting happening, you're going to feel some pain, you're going to feel some discomfort. So I'm going to remove the copper toxicity from the spinal cord. And you tell me when it tingles, and you tell me when the pain reduces. What's the pain level right now? Um, it's small. I would say maybe a three, perhaps. Okay, let's bring it down to a one or a zero. So here we go. <clears throat> In Montana's spinal cord, neutralize and eliminate all of the copper toxicity. Well, copper buildup and deposits within the lower portion of the spinal cord and spinal column. Let me know when it tingles. Okay, that just lifted. I do feel some tingling. I still feel it's like pressure. It sort of feels like sitting on a softball is the feeling that I that that's the sensation that I get. The the normal pain is like sitting on a softball. Um I do feel I did feel the tingling, but the pain it's funny, the pain's kind of moved forward, but it moved from where it was. Okay, the moved. pain. Now, no, no, when the pain moves, that tells me we could be chasing something. Okay. All right. Now, let's see. What problem do we need to work on within Montana? What is the problem? And the problem is we're going to remove the. Well, it looks like it could be an interesting show, Randy. Remove the reptilian. Remove the reptilian. Mm -hmm. Okay, the reptilian is within her. Okay, reptilian is in the reproductive system. Okay, let's move that out. Now, this is not just your ordinary reptilian. This is a time incarnation. Reptilians created time. We're going to remove the time incarnation. Here we go. Use true love and light to lift, delete, and remove, cast out all time incarnations of reptilians from the reproductive system. Send them to ether. Okay, that may have felt like something whooshed up and left your body a little bit. You know, it's funny. I felt kind of full. Um, it's hard to explain. It sort of felt like a glug. I don't know how to just explain that. Kind of a, it's like I got full. Okay. That was the feeling. So something definitely changed. Something definitely shifted. The, the, the unique thing about this method is that you feel things happening right away. It's not you have to wait five days, ten days. You can feel things happening right away almost. What's the pain level in your in your back of the spine now? Um, I would say maybe a one and a half. It's funny. I feel like something is shot up and it's right in my chest of the solar plexus right now. And it's kind of uh, spinning, which is just yeah. tossing that out there. I don't know if that means anything, but right uh, there. What problem do we now need to work on with in Montana? And the problem is we are going to remove... Remove. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. This is someone named Vashtar. Vashtar from her. Vashtar from her. Okay. So there is something within your soul. Now, this being's name is Vashtar. And he is the is it possible, Chris, I don't mean to interrupt, but could he be in the room? Because I'm sensing like I'm seeing a, a large being even in the room, which yeah, Randy could, knows could my well be now. Now, now my, my guides are over there right now, and they're going through your body. So that could be what you're sensing. Um, okay, but all right. 
could definitely be in their room, but he is within your soul right now. Now, Vashtar is the lord of shamanic curses and, and vows and that type of thing. And strangely enough, uh, Vashtar is my father. So, sorry, Dad, we need to kick you out again. Okay, so let's get rid of him. Now, what, what, what I mean by that is, is uh, whenever there's somebody high in energy in a family, there's always somebody very low in energy, and that, that is my father. So Okay. Yeah, so let's get rid of him. Use true love, true light. Cut cords and connections with Vashtar and Montana's soul. Take Vashtar into ether. There he goes. Toodaloo, Dad. <laughs> yeah, that? funny. I, I, I saw that, actually. That was strange. I saw that. So you're It actually had a pink hue. It had a pink hue. It, it shot up. It had actually had a pink hue to it. Okay. okay. Now, now, is that feeling in your chest uh, gone in your solar plexus? Um, it's still active. I have a, like an active portal there, and so it swirls often. So I don't know why it's active right now. I just noticed it came active when you were uh, addressing the abdominal we're gonna thing. Do, so. We're, we're going to close it and, and condemn all of the portals, gateways, and, and stargates within your body. That's how they're getting in and out. Okay. Within the chakra system, close, condemn, and collapse all stargates, portals, and wormholes. <clears throat> Those are now closed. How does that feel? Well, I got distracted from it. Except my, this is going to sound strange. But I had my mouth open. I was breathing, and I felt something try to go into my mouth. So I shut my mouth. Um, I'm very sensitive to things, and I felt something try to fly into my mouth. So I kind of missed the last thing you said because I was aware of that. Okay, so, so basically, I closed all the, the stargates, portals, and wormholes uh, okay. in the chakra system. They like to use the chakra system for that. Okay. Let's see what else is going on. So it sounds like you've got a lot going on. There's a lot of different levels. What questions, yeah. what questions now optimal for Montana, please? Let me ask you this, Montana. Do you have a sense that uh, in, the, in the last few minutes of working with Chris, uh, some things have shifted? Yeah, definitely. And in fact, I'm tingling on the right hand side, yeah. the side of my body, yeah. which is interesting also. Yeah. Like, so. so if it's just the right side of your body, that side could be in a lower dimension. I've seen that before. You're straddling dimensions. What area within Montana's body is in crisis? Okay. Let's get right down to it. What is causing crisis in Montana's entire body? Bear with me one second while I find this. What is causing crisis in the entire body? Okay, okay, okay. What is causing crisis in the entire body? And this is probably going to sound uh, a little scary. Okay. But not to worry. I'm on your side. <laughs> okay, this is something that, that has I haven't seen in a long time. It's called the Nine Circle Cult. And this is an Nine Illuminati cult. An Illuminati cult. There you go, Randy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now this, this is the cult that, that takes infants and uses them for sacrifices. Apparently in Montreal, I think a year ago, they, they went into somebody's basement in a house and found like multiple, multiple infant skulls and, and some like 600 or something. 600, uh, yeah, in, in Montreal. Okay, let's lift wow. that. Let's lift it. Here we go. Use pure love and light. Lift, delete, and remove the nine circle cult. From within Montana's entire body. Think about that ugly thing. 
had a hell of a lot of that going on in me. Ooh, yeah. Close yeah. to my whisper. Whoa. <laughs> Yes, I feel cool. a circle that goes shoulder to shoulder. It goes down to my belly button. It's a circle that goes like to my neck area and it's the size all the way around shoulder to shoulder, belly button up around. That's the size of a circle. It's some sort of, um, it reminds me of a Stargate because it actually has um, a like a rim around it. It's not just like a typical portal, but I see that when you were saying that. Okay. Let's ask again, what problem do we need to work on now within Montana? I think it was attached to what you were saying about the, did you call it the nine circle call or what did you call that? Nine circle call. Okay. Okay, so now we need to remove the ritual. So there's a cult, there's a ritual. Where is the ritual within Montana? Lift and delete the ritual. Satanic, shamanic <sighs> ritual in Montana's entire body. The ritual is lifted. How does that feel? Um, well, I saw a blank right like on my heart. It was like a white dot that seemed like the size of a Christmas light, which I hadn't seen before. I don't know what that was, but something sparked there around the heart area, which I don't know what that means, but I saw that. Let's check one more. I don't want to leave this hanging. Okay, uh, what problem do we need to work on within Montana, please? Problem is we're going to remove, yeah, he's always there too. That, everybody wants to come to the party. We're going to remove Lucifer from her, yeah, from the soul. Okay, I kick this guy's butt all over the universe. I call him Lucy. There we go. <laughs> yeah, use pure love and light and cast out there. Lucifer from the soul. Send Lucifer into ether. Get by Lucifer. Bye bye Lucy. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to do, uh, it's, it's, I call this truing the soul, which means I'm going to say the word soul true. And this is going to connect your soul to true love and light outside of this time matrix. So it can actually be healed. So within Montana, soul true. Soul true. There we go. So that, that's going to take effect and it's going to actually start to heal your soul how are you feeling uh yeah i it was funny i feel uh better before you said the soul true i noticed that the air got really thick and it was almost like i was going to have an asthmatic problem um it was having a little bit of trouble breathing and then i felt like i was in like uh there was a lot of darkness around me um i feel like that darkness has passed um i don't see that anymore and i, I can breathe okay um, I don't feel anything right now, so I guess they're kind of detached. Nice. Uh, yeah, those, those cults, there again, I talked about it before, the occult rituals, the, the curses, the spells, all these things. Now, uh, you can go on the Internet and you can just go on YouTube and you can do a search on anybody doing occult rituals, and they'll show you how to do it. And you know, if you consider the work I'm doing is white magic, of course, or we'll do black magic. And they're, they're having fun with it. They think it's a big joke, but they're actually causing harm to people. Uh, even just, you know, thinking negatively about somebody on, a, on an ongoing basis that can cause some yeah. kind of curse or a ritual or a spell to happen within them. So yeah. uh, we, we have to be careful of the thoughts we put out there, too. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I will take that uh, with the good advisement. Now, if, if you want to continue this session, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be different layers to go to. Go on my website, and I'm not trying to make a sale here, but book an appointment, and we'll help you at a, at a greater level. Yes. You know, Chris, thank you so much for your time. I am, I'm kind of blown away, so I have a lot to process and think about, and I am very, very appreciative. And, um, and, and thank you, Randy, for allowing me to call in. I very much appreciate that as well. Yeah, follow up with me. Drop me, in, drop me an email. 
It's offplanetradio1 at gmail.com. And let me know how you're making out. Um, I'd like to have a follow-up with us. It's amazing stuff. Okay. I, Thank you so much yeah, for calling in will. tonight and being, um, being such a, 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 an incredibly cooperative patient for Chris to demonstrate <laughs> this. I, I felt the energy as well. I, it was very interesting watching this. Uh, I'll play the video back. It'll be interesting to see what happens. But uh, I could feel the energy as well. I there was there was a lifting. And I, I anybody that watches this video, uh, Chris, back me up here. Is there kind of an ambient effect to this as well? Oh, 100%. Uh, the, the energy is quantum energy, and it's going to stay within this podcast forever. Uh, if you go on a lot of my YouTube videos, uh, I do some demonstrations of running energy. And every time you watch it, you can feel the energy coming off it. So it, it is always going to be there. And uh, many other radio shows, I've, I've done mass healings for people. And many people just keep on going back to that podcast to receive the energy to, to raise their own vitality. So it will stay in here forever. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time, gentlemen. I appreciate it. And um, I will um, let you go back to business. All right. Blessings. Thank you, Montan. Blessings. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. So I now what we want to do, Chris, unless you have a, do you have any follow up on that? Um, anything you want to comment on? Um, basically, what we would do is, is if we kept on working further and further, we'd have to spend a good hour and probably maybe two or three sessions on something like this is we'd get to the physical problem yeah. with, within the, the uh, reproductive system. The endometriosis is going to be uh, probably a parasite or an iron buildup, one or the other for sure, maybe a copper buildup. And those are things we'd have to clean out to, to finish the job. So I really hope that she continues on with doing some sessions so we can finish the job. Yeah, absolutely. We want to bring Whisper on now. And uh, again, for those who don't know, Whisper has been uh, over a period of, and I, I can't remember the exact time period he'll tell us, has been subjected to increasing levels of interference and um, abductions as a result of um, multidimensional entities uh, that began manifesting with an experience he had, oddly enough, with a television set. And so, Whisper, why don't you bring people up, give the, the nutshell of your case history, and then we'll kind of go from there in terms of uh, what's going on now. Well, um about 10 years ago or so, I started um, uh, picking up on astral entities, basically really hearing voices, um, feeling different things. And um, over the last number of years, I've gotten to know a ton of them. And in the last four years or so, um, I was living in the middle of our town in Winnipeg, and there were all kinds of different uh, activity and also uh, time traveler activity. Um, sort of like a Montauk um, project related stuff, uh, super soldiers um, coming through timelines and stuff like that. I used to live in a building that would etherically drop below the ground and then come back up again. And um, over the last little while, um, there's more ET action. Like you guys were talking about entanglement and um, uh, different timelines and abductions and stuff like that earlier and I was listening kind of biting my tongue I think what's happening is when they actually you can have future and past timelines But you can also be timed in the moment or cloned out in the moment just with like a cut and paste And they all feel just as real as your physical life But what they do is they cut and paste a little piece of your spirit into that and your spirit's not your soul. That's your actual connection to source Okay, it's your battery for your soul and um, so when you have those kind of entanglements you could be having the same shitty day a thousand different times on the same day and whoever is um, doing these uh, type, types of cloning is basically uh, feeding off of you at every single level okay and that's kind of what I've been running into lately um, like I'm very empathic with uh, with my clones if they're in pain a lot of times I'm feeling it here and somewhere out there They've got me hooked up to something and they're running a bunch of different scenarios through me all the time They've got my brain sort of cordoned off and um, uh, I can listen to different 
parts of my brain and hear different types of scenarios running. Like in the last week, I just wrote down a few things while we we're sitting here. Um, let me see if I Move in a little closer to your microphone if you can. There, whisper. Your sure. your echoey. Your echoey. Uh, in the last. Um, Much better. Three, Thanks. Say three in the last say, say three days. Every ten minutes or so, a new scenario has started. And I've been running into, this is just listing them off, uh, human cloning, super soldiers, time travelers, aliens and their experiments, uh, which are basically like overlays that they put over top of your astral body. I actually feel them going into my body like a card. Um, uh, PSYOP special forces. I've been listening to Russian, East Indian, Sikh, Iran, USA, um, no Canada, which is where I live. Mm -hmm. which is strange. Um, just about all of it seems to be electronically done with these cards. And the cards are basically like a clone or an overlay. Like most, everyone talks about reptilians all the time. And you'll see shape-shifting videos and stuff like that on, on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen those? Like, Yeah. I mean, I've seen some that I think are just suspect, but... Uh... Well, a lot of them are, but you know how they're done? There's not a, a giant alligator ghost behind you you have a flat panel inside of you that's almost like your chakra system that they can access mm -hmm. they take over your energy body and then they hook up into you in such a way that they can drive okay they can actually take over your thoughts and and live vicariously through you and when they're pissed off or really happy a lot of times that's where you'll see that shape-shifting action because they kind of lose control a little bit and um I've also been running into tons of stuff where guys are dropping these cards in and then five minutes later, someone's coming to steal the one they just put in, which is, is really strange. And a lot of that has to do with uh, different super soldier projects and time traveling super soldiers that there's haves and there's have nots out there and the have nots rip off the other guys. So it's, it, it's a pretty screwed up situation, but you know, I'm kind of sitting back and listening to it happen and watching it and feeling it happen to myself. And um, that's kind of, it's been going on with me for a long, long time. But I think it started mostly when they were dropping the building in the middle of my town underneath. There's big bases underneath. I feel lifts coming up all the time. If I do a major clearing, um, I'll see ships leaving from underground under our city. Uh, it's like a real, real interesting place to live right now. I don't know if it's like that everywhere, but uh, it, even Chris's office, uh, he was doing a healing. I was sitting in um, two weeks ago, and all of a sudden, an elevator comes up behind him, okay, and, they, and something's touching the back of his head. So I did a clearing. They've been gone since then. I just grabbed one of Chris's tools, cleared whoever was operating the lift, and I came back a week later, and etherically, the lift is still here. Now, on top of that, um, sort of a, a neat little update, there's all kinds of different servers that are kind of overlaying over our reality and doing a bunch of sort of almost virtual reality versions of everything. Mm -hmm. And that is creating almost like a fractal effect. effect. Now, you so said one, you said servers. You are you, you mean, Do you mean that metaphorically or do you mean they're actually... No, no, there's, there's a literal bunch of different types of servers that are overlaid over the top of the actual geometry of our reality that are recreating almost like um, artificial uh, subplanes that are almost like astral realities. But there's so much um, artificial intelligence out there that it's taking over everything and um, creating very, very weird scenarios. Like one guy in a timeline maybe 20 years ago did something and he's still popping up all over the place um, this, uh, there, because of all the time travelers that are, are jumping these timelines and there's tons of guys that are pretty skilled at doing it. Don't recommend it. It's dangerous. I lost myself quite a few times out on different timelines. Uh, they were teaching me how to do it. Um, and don't, um, if someone starts teaching you tonight because they listen <laughs> through me and they'll be jumping through you into your listening audience. Yeah. Um, um Oh, and that's another thing. You've got to be really careful with the internet right now. Um, I wanted to learn about um, bilocation. So I looked up bilocation on uh, the internet, and there's this lady sitting there talking about her timeline was frozen. She ended up um, by harp, 
And then um, she ended up coming here to this one just by locating here or translocating here. But, but her Secret Service or um, CIA, her reality, which is a physical earth, comes through her. So I start watching this video. I turn it off. Within 10 minutes, like 20 different portals opened up within me, shooting out to everyone around me. And these guys start pouring through into our reality. Now, this is happening with a bunch of different super soldier programs, like there's Mantok and Mill Labs. There's uh, the Nazis, SS. I've just been dealing with uh, guys from 1939 through 1945 uh, that are now being taught how to time travel and making it here to our reality, which is a huge pain in the ass. Um, just all kinds of those types of scenarios lately. And I'm running into like a new one every 10 or 15 minutes almost. And a lot of it stems around guys driving them through me, using me as a filter, and then they're stealing beer through me, which is putting me in a really weird position. <laughs> and I live in a house where it's sort of, I, I just rent a room and there's, um, there's a bunch of different um, ethnicities living there from India, Iran, um, all over the place. Even their governments seem to be coming through and getting in on the action. So it's um, it, it's really, really uh, kind of a, a weird, weird scenario. But uh, over the last month or so, I just did sort of a quick muscle test myself. I've been abducted about a hundred times, um, getting cloned out um, for these different timeline experiments and different clones and different super soldier programs that. You're basically a meat puppet out there. They reprogram you. You don't even know you're there or you're barely there and they turn off your actual consciousness and, and add, add their own to it. Um, so that's kind of been, that's my week, but it's, it's been going on for, for, for quite a while. Now you just, now in about five minutes there, you just outlined enough activity to keep a, a small city busy and, so tell me I'm a little bit of, <laughs> but what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is, are we talking real time? Are we getting, are you getting time compression? Are you getting um, no. time? No, not... this is happening to me in real time. It's just about all um, auditory. Um, there's been different groups coming through and teaching me how to deactivate the different gear that's in me or that they keep putting into me. But say I get abducted and ET puts in an overlay over my astral body, which feels like a card. Okay. 20 minutes later, I'm actually back with that card in my body. Five minutes after that, I keep on running into this one personality who's running around with the team. They're there undoing it and stealing it, blanking out the card and re sticking it in someone else. I don't even know exactly what they do, but typically it's like an interface or um, a lot of times there's a different personality or a, a driver attached, almost sort of like MK Ultra style. And just for the record, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I, I've always hated that stuff and all this stuff is hitting me. Well, I don't hate it. I just never really paid any attention to it. And lately it's all sort of these kinds of um, scenarios. And I think a lot of it, is because of these different overlays over our reality. All these ETs that are here are trying to impose their sort of version of events, plus create infrastructure to pull off their experiments. And because it's getting mixed with a bunch of different AIs or artificial intelligences, um, it's all kind of getting, uh, what's the word? It's, it's blended together. And um, it seems like a lot of them are, are losing control because there's, there's a ton of, People coming from different times, and if you imagine, say, guys from 1945 running into, say, 2350, okay, um, doing remote viewing in them or taking a lie down in them, learning all their gear, coming back to 1949, <coughs> and then up to now, 2015, what have they developed and what are they using on us and our populations and stuff like that? So because it's so mixed, it's actually pretty dangerous, I think. <laughs> But yeah, it's a lot, but that's um, because they're, the only reason I brought up so many different things, and it sounds like I just watched YouTube and hit uh, conspiracy theory, that's not the case. It's, it's basically these type of scenarios plus a, probably 20 to 50 other ones um, that they seem to keep cycling through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
What is what is your overall mental state when you're experiencing this? In other words, are you are you walking around conscious? Or are you in trance state? Or are you immobile? Are you being pulled out of your body? What is your overall being out of my body and running into myself out of my body? Um, coming back I hate when that me. happens. <sighs> um, uh, and once they're out, they're attaching all this different gear to your astral body and sometimes it makes it really hard for you to get back in plus you take all the different timelines that they're creating sort of artificially plus the actual physical clones which are you know just as meaty as you and me um it's uh, it's a really confusing situation i'm watching it happen to other people around me too that aren't aware or like i'm extremely empathic uh, um and pretty psychic so um um basically i'm seeing this happening to other people i'm watching people get kicked out of their bodies um just sitting there uh, i've even seen it happen to chris have watched him fight his way back into his body while i've been sitting here um that was when the lift was coming up through the the office here um and then you can also mix in the whole inner earth um scenarios because that's where a lot of these lifts are coming from and uh there's lifts that are on ships underground but there's also sort of an inner um scenario and they've got their own artificial intelligence and it's a very chippy mind control place Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (coughs) tell me a little bit about what you know about the inner earth are we when you say inner earth are you talking physically hollow earth something inside the ground down There's there's different levels um, the inner earth that I'm talking about is to a large extent, um, totally reptilian. Okay. But is okay. it dimensional? Is it interdimensional? Yeah, they're invisible, but you can see, you can see their outline when they're popping up and their gear as it comes through the floor and stuff. Um, um, actually, if you, if you want to do a neat experiment at home and you want to just find out about this stuff, grab a toilet paper roll, like a, just um, like the cardboard tube and hold it up and say um collect up in the room any uh reptilian energies and you'll actually feel your room dip right into it almost or i do um or any government psyops groups or any gray ets or any time travelers or um it's pretty neat. You can just grab a, an empty tube as long as it's got a spiral in it and just hold mm-hmm. it up and, and ask it. And you can sort of find out what's around you. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, it's been an interesting uh, <laughs> That's your job. week, eh? <laughs> that's my last two days. I've been trying to get a hold of him for three days to get, get onto the show. And when I can't get a hold of him, you know something's going on. But oh, as far as mental... Um, acuity or whatever i like i'm hearing voices which are basically coming through electronics that i can almost basically prove or it's been proven to me because i've got groups that have also tried to help me many times and a lot of it's the proper way of uninstalling gear uh deactivating it um pulling out implants um all that kind of stuff but um so i do hear voices and i feel stuff that's not there so by definition that would be a psychosis i guess um, but I can you know, basically prove that it's there um, by deactivating it or turning it back on, being able to turn it on or off just by the piece of gear that's in there. And it's etheric, most of their implants and these cards and stuff. But So am I, uh, yeah, you know, it's a good question. I, I feel pretty lucid and um, pretty grounded in reality. But uh, I almost feel like a bit of a radio tuner that's getting uh, dragged into a bunch mm. of different stuff. Not actually, right in our reality, but uh, <laughs> within uh, a few different um, uh, maybe kilohertz or hertz uh, uh, difference. Tell me a little bit about what you're getting in terms of the AI and the generation of these entities as a result of digital technology well um a lot of ai i think is coming from either very rich controlling type of people or different governments that are working out different ways to do mind control and data 
um, either manipulation or gathering. So a lot of it's on the internet. Like I'll get jumped off a, an internet site. Really, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of them are using uh, a lot of different psyop groups also use virtual bad guys and virtual soldiers, which will move just like an astral body does, except it's virtual reality until it hits someone with the right chip or interface, and then it can physically take you over. Um, so you mix that with a bunch of different ETs that have been here since, say, 2012, watching what was going on, like the Soho Wars in space and the, you know, the, the whole Mayan 2012. Um, yeah. Uh, um, so, um, but artificial intelligence is being manufactured by all types of different groups. And guess what happens? The guy with the best artificial intelligence kind of takes over everybody else's and is king of the castle. Eh? So it's a really dangerous situation, especially when you think about some of the ETs that have been here and their um, uh, level of technology over ours. So we, we make up something that can access a bunch of different stuff, maybe off a stolen piece of ET uh, technology that was backwards engineered. And uh, they go, oh, hey, I recognize that. We made that 3,000 years ago, and it's showing up here, but I'm pretty sure we still got the codes to take it over. Um, and now with all the virtual reality and cut and paste type timeline scenarios, all that stuff's out there a million different times in a different, million different ways with them. Who knows how many backdoors attached to it that just about anyone, you know, in the know, say, in a, a, a different race could just walk in and, and basically take over. So uh, I, I think a lot of it's reptilian because they use that type of an overlay. To, like, it's almost like your chakra system to access you. But I think a bunch of different ETs that live vicariously through us um, that don't actually have spirit but still have a soul and want to incarnate have to do it that way. It's very mechanical. It's almost like they download their personality onto a card. That card can pretty much take a brain map of you and, and run your show if it wants to. Or it can run whatever experiments, or it can monitor whatever experiments are going on from your um, your last abduction. And a lot of people right now are getting abducted more than 100 times a month. You know, like if, if you do pendulum dowsing, just grab a pendulum and write, you know, one to 5,000 and uh, and see how many times in the last year you've been abducted uh, and a lot of people would be quite surprised that it's not two or three but it's in the hundreds wow that's off scale man what if anything are you aware of right now in terms of cloning projects whisper uh, um well apparently like um in the states if you have you know five to ten million dollars there's uh because of all the underground tunnels and stuff like that the reptilians have cloning factories you can actually have yourself cloned if you had the money to do it um but a lot of cloning is being done for uh fighting wars elsewhere right clandestine purposes yeah they're taking us they're having us cloned and they're selling us or selling our clones and we're out there fighting in different wars um, throughout space um, or maybe even in space or maybe even against other humans like different uh, different types of groups are very very bored up and they need something attached to spirit which is why a lot of people still feel what's going on as spirit is the battery that runs the whole thing but they might have 10 or 20 or 50 or 200 of you all still attached to your body um, and they're using you as the battery to, to run it and then you're out there fighting wars for them or doing whatever so can those clones exist once the main battery the main um, source material has ceased uh, to a large degree, no, but say 50,000 years ago when you decided to come to Earth and start incarnating here, um, you might have been, your spirit might have been at 100%, but because of all this different cloning that's gone on over the, over the ages, um, you might have only 2 or 3% of your original spirit, but mm -hmm. it's such a powerful force, that's all they need. It's, an un, it's a never-ending battery, basically, for them. It never runs out. You can take a grain of sand of your spirit 
and still run a clone or they can still run a clone. And then they timeshare us out, they sell us, they do all kinds of stuff like that. Like you've heard the prison planet scenarios and stuff like that. A lot of people don't really realize how bad it, it's gotten. And then you overlay that with artificial intelligence um, and virtual cloning, um, where they're also taking little bits of your spirit and, and cloning it out. Um, and using it to run clones or the battery for their infrastructure for their overlay over our reality. Um, uh, they basically need the spirit. If they didn't have that, it would be pointless. So, and that was a gift to humanity. There's very few ETs that have a spirit. They'll have soul, okay, yeah. with an energy body or an electromagnetic body, but they don't necessarily have spirit, which is the battery. Let's let's back up because uh, Chris, I'll ask you to comment on this as well. Let's make the differentiation between soul and spirit, because my sense of this is that while spirit is the essential self, the soul is largely an interface. Is that a wrong or right concept? Um, I, I'm I'm going to say I don't know uh, okay. because. Yeah, there are so many different concepts, so many different uh, ways to describe <laughs> what I think what Whisper is saying it resonates more with me than anything I've heard. The soul is a machine, basically, in, that ETs created to put consciousness. Or so more you think it's an artificiality? Very much. But okay. your spirit is source or source energy. Okay. And most people don't know the difference. They think your spirit or your soul is the same thing, or they mix up the word. I saw a spirit like Casper uh, run run past, but your spirit and your soul are, are two different things. And when most people are running into ghosts, they are running into your emotional body. And Chris was saying you have, you know, 350 bodies earlier or something along that line. But what gets stuck here as a ghost is your emotional body or your astral body. And within a month or so, your spirit actually leaves that. And then you've got a bunch of stuck patterns around, which goes back to your scenario earlier about a, a mental hospital. And everyone who's died there or had a traumatic event in there has left their imprint. And then you mix that imprint with a bunch of, um, <coughs> uh, with a little bit of energy and some uh, uh, emotional bodies of people that have died. Uh, you can end up with a lot of really strange, haunty type scenarios. Yeah, you know, for me, I don't think I've ever experienced in the creepiest haunted place or cemetery the intensity that I felt in that in that psychiatric hospital this day that that haunts me, and it's something I actually pick up vibrationally when I'm around people who I know are are, are unbalanced. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's 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 a sadness, a depression, a darkness Confusion. of detached, detached beings. And, you know, for anybody that's listening to this interview and, and heard some of the things we're talking about, uh, you might think we're insane. But the truth of the matter is that the vibrational energy here on the show tonight has been exceptional. Um in terms of uh, in terms of putting out the information but also in terms of just vibrationally balancing things um having the opportunity to work with montana tonight and um so you know i think people have them there's so many misconcepts out there about what constitutes a so-called rational worldview but echo when you're talking about uh, some of your experiences, it it sounds like you don't have room for a normal life, but you do you? I mean, no. A normal? No, no. no? It's like I'm getting used almost like a bio computer for somebody. Okay. I feel where they're plugging into me a lot of times. I was hoping that it changed. Better. This is not my will to to have this stuff run through me constantly, but a lot of it comes down to um, almost getting these different groups to fight each other or attack me. And then um, <clears throat> the biggest sort of um, recurring theme here is they're doing that. And then uh, so they create a psychic attack 
they use me as a filter. They collect everybody's techniques, uh, gear, and um, as much uh, instruction sets and different uh, codes and stuff like that as they possibly can, and they're stealing it. So I'm kind of getting used as a battlefield just so they can filter and steal uh, gear a lot of times. And it's basically, this is not my intent of my way to live or the way I want to live. Plus, I think it puts me in a lot of danger because they're running all kinds of crazy groups through me, different um, government psyops groups, one against the other. Um, then you mix that with uh, the super soldiers against different groups of ETs or this group of ETs that hates that group of ETs. Um, or this archetype of archetype of this god uh, against you know this god, um, all, all kinds of different stuff like that. But what's what is kind of neat? I'm I'm using it to learn and grow as much as I can. Um, I I'm learning it to be my own kind of healer because th there's just about no implant that I could run into now that I couldn't disable and pull out myself. Um, and then you mix that with the quantum energy stylings uh, that Chris does. Um, stylings, I like that. You like that? <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm working towards my own um, mastery sort of under Chris's tutelage. And then I've learned a ton of stuff that I haven't even talked to him about because I've been kept so busy doing this that I need to show him how to do. <clears throat> or if he wants to, to know how to do it. And then... Um, you know, so I'm working towards that. I'm using it as uh, a chance to do some personal development, even though I pretty much feel kind of like a slave uh, or a prisoner in my own body right now. Has this gotten worse since the last time we spoke? I mean, it sounds like it's intensified incredibly. Well, it has. Um, they've ramped up the, the number of um, uh, or frequency of, of, of when these start. It used to be every 15 minutes to half an hour a new one would start. Now it's like every 10 minutes or so and it doesn't go on for five seconds and then 10 minutes later a new one starts. It goes for the whole 10 minutes, gets to the end and then the next one's already queued up to start. My so, word. Like, it's like I'm hooked up somewhere, quite literally and they're using uh, I don't know if they don't, if they know that I'm physically going through this or if they've got like a clone um, or an abducted, you know, central nervous system somewhere hooked up and being run into a, a computer. That's almost what it feels like. But I'm aware of it, and it is making it pretty tricky to have, uh, you know, have much of a meaningful life. So, Chris, what's, Chris what, what, what is the what, – what do you see as the ultimate outcome here? Or is he just going through a really intense period here, and are, are we gaining – are you gaining ground in terms of getting to the root of this? Well, ultimately, with, with a case like, like like whispers, is is uh, learning as you go, and uh, you know th this is a, a very, very, very big scenario, and and learning exactly how the universe works, all the mechanical, the quantum mechanics of the universe, what is all involved on, on different scales and different dimensions, different universes, different levels. Mm -hmm. and, and, and things that we don't even understand, things we cannot ever conceive uh, within our reality that, that are going on here. Uh, you know, when you're talking about timelines, you're talking about clones, you're talking about hybrids, you're talking about reptilians, you're talking about the Sith, you're talking about all these different things that are going on and try, trying to, to sort it all out to see what the problem is. As soon as you sort it out, they get mixed up again. They keep you, shifting the game. In the game, and that's the big thing right there. The word "the game," everything. This whole reason why we're here is a game. We're all playing a game. When I'm dowsing with my pendulum, it's a game. Can I figure out the answer? If I figure it out the right way, ask the right questions, I get the prize and I get to heal somebody. It's all a game. Wow. We're uh, just about at the end of our time tonight, and. Uh... Whisper, I want to give you the last the last word to say anything you want to you want to talk about or or say uh, leave us with. Um. Oh, one thing I've been running into a ton is you're just sitting there thinking your own thoughts and you're going mm, or aha uh -huh, 
or you might even mouth the word yes. Um, most of these type of scenarios, and a lot of people aren't um, aware that they're happening to them, they need your permission. And there's a bunch of them that are, are following rules, and they're making you say yes, 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 yes. I even caught them doing it like clicking on a computer. Uh, would you like to close this box? And you click, okay. And then they record it and use it every time they want to access you. So you got to be careful to, what I do is in all four corners of my brain, uh, quite often is uh, just say den permission denied. And you can do that over and over and it'll help um, if you're getting abducted. Uh, it'll also help if you're getting experimented on. <clears throat> a lot of the time travelers don't abide by any rules. They don't give a shit. But most of the ETs, um, uh, it can uh, definitely help you uh, bring your uh, your level of uh, abductions down. Um, so, but just about any of these experiments, be it underworld or um, or above the sides or stuff that's happening with governments, they actually need your permission to do it, and they will get it falsely by getting to mouth the word yes. Um, permission denied. Permission denied. Permission denied. Permission denied. Permission I do denied. not consent. I do not consent. Guys, we're out of time. Chris, um, thank you so much for coming coming back and bringing Whisper with you for um, working with me, for working with Montana tonight and with the audience at large. Can't thank you enough for sharing this. We need to get you back again uh, very soon because... Whisper, you just opened up a whole bunch of stuff. I, I wish we would have had, had more time. Like, hours like, you did. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the Cosmic Cracker Jack box, my friend. All right, yeah. we got to bug out of here. We're out of time. This is Off Planet TV. I'm Randy Boggins. The truth is out there. It's inside you. Keep looking for it. Keep working at it. Namaste. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Randy. Thanks, Randy. Good night.